So plant breeding uh, started a long time ago. It started with prehistoric man. When prehistoric man decided to select one plant in preference to another, that's how plant breeding began. A plant breeder is a person involved in um, the genetic improvement of crop plants. They use um, knowledge from genetics to improve aspects of a, a plant that uh, increases economic value of that plant. Normally seek to in, improve the economic value of the crop in which they work. So. I mean, it's, it's important to know that especially in the U.S., you know, agriculture is an important, I mean, we feed the world, we feed the nation, you know, we feed our local population, and so, you know, we, we, we farm intensively, and so we're, you know, we're always faced with high cost, new diseases, new insect pests, and that's where plant breeders come in. When you're breeding new crops and you're doing selection programs, you're, you're trying to, you know, we're trying to breed for disease resistance, insect resistance, and most importantly, trying to increase yield potential. And sugarcane is in Asia, Papua New Guinea. And so some of the early native peoples naturally selected softer, sweeter types of sugarcane. So those were really the true first plant breeders. They also selected some for uh, building construction. These types of varieties had higher fiber content. So you can see, depending on the use, people naturally began to select out different types of sugarcane. And then as the age of science uh, increased, we just began applying more scientific principles to essentially the same thing that these native peoples were doing. So essentially, uh, Plant breeding has evolved over the years because uh, today we, we use more uh, information to carry out our plant breeding programs. For example, early man relied solely on phenotypic, um, they did not evaluate the plant, they just evaluated it by looking at it and deciding that this was a better plant and they selected it. Today we have more information about the genetics of the plant. We know for example, that uh, a trait is controlled by genetics, and we know the extent to which a particular trait is controlled by genetics, and we use that information to select the plant. We also have uh, new tools like biotechnology and molecular markers that we bring to the table. That helps us make, make more informed decisions as we go about our selection program. I remember when I was in school, they always talked about plant breeding as being both an art and a science. So you can say early man probably conducted it more in terms of the art of, of plant breeding by just taking visual observations. Well, as you know, science became more part of plant breeding programs, you know, we began understanding the genetics and environmental components of selection. Early man uh, used most, uh, more of the art than the science. And today we use more science, but there's a little bit of art to it because you define what you want to select before you go out and select for it. So that's the art that comes into play as a, when you conduct breeding programs. So I always had an interest in math and science coming through high school, and it, 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 directed, it directed my interest in college. I grew up on a farm, so I knew I wanted to have a career in agriculture. I didn't really know what I wanted at the time, but my interest in science and math really served me well for a career in plant breeding. And so with that, we took genetics courses, uh, we took math, basic calculus, and a lot of statistics. A lot of the early statistics were derived by plant breeders. Uh, because, you know, we deal with complex traits and distributions. So the plant breeding curriculum was a lot of biology, genetics, statistics, and now when you move into some of the more modern uh, techniques, it's a lot of molecular biology. Uh, I grew up in Cameroon, and that's in West Africa. I grew up on an oil palm plantation, and I worked with plant breeders when I was uh, a teenager. My dad took me to meet the plant breeder, and uh, 
I spent some time with that person and he really motivated me uh, to see what he was trying to do. Um, when I went to uh, uh, college, I studied botany for my first degree and then I came back and I asked my dad what he thought I should uh, specialize in. And he made the comment that plant breeders are always needed at the plantation and each time they hired one, somebody hired them away from the plantation that I should go study plant breeding. So that's how I ended up studying plant breeding. I took a lot of uh, math, statistics and, and biology courses. Um, by the time I got my, uh, finished my, up my PhD, there was a new emerging field called molecular biology, which uh, I had to take. So that's what prepared me uh, uh, to be a plant breeder today. And having, having grown up on the farm here in Louisiana, I can always remember when a new variety was introduced uh, onto the farm. The American Sugarcane League would distribute seed cane of new varieties that the breeders uh, would develop. And so when these new varieties were uh, distributed on the farm, they were always eagerly anticipated because people knew that new varieties had a big impact on their farming operations. So I can remember riding around <clears throat> with my dad on the farm trying to learn the identity of new varieties. And uh, I just remember being very proud of the fact that, you know, I could drive down the road and name this variety and that variety. And then you could follow them all the way through harvest and see where they had the impact on the bottom line. So th uh, that, always, that always drove my, my career choice, that remembering that in grade school and high school. Yeah, where, where I grew up to, we had a problem with a disease, with an insect pest called leaf miner. And they flew in an expert all the way from Europe to come work on this insect pest. And uh, while he was working on the pest, he also recommended that they get a new plant breeder to see if they could breed their way out of this problem. And uh, while I was there, I saw them uh, use plant breeding to uh, select a new uh, palm that was tolerant to this pest. So that was really motivating to me. And they, and they call plant breeding a multidisciplinary effort because you involve geneticists, molecular biologists, plant pathologists for diseases, entomologists for the insect problem. So, you know, really plant breeders are team builders. They're trying to build coalitions to solve problems which have a, a wide range of effects on a crop. So, you know, a person has to have you know good team building skills to, in order to be a plant breeder because they're problem solvers. And uh, a plant breeder should also have good managerial skills because you manage people as well as budgets. Um, depending on where you're working, if you're working in a public institution, you have to uh, communicate well, both uh, verbally and in writing. You have to seek a grant, so you have to write grants. You also have to write publications. You have to communicate with your staff. You have to communicate with your colleagues as well as with your subordinates. So communication is very important. Managerial skills are also very important. And then you have to be a team builder because you work with plant pathologists, entomologists. Um, sometimes you have to work with statisticians. If, 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 if you have a new problem uh, that you're trying to solve that is beyond your means. Yes, so there are many breeders in the uh, public system, universities in the land grant uh, university systems. Sugarcane and rice in Louisiana are, are good examples of the land grant mission. There's not a lot of private company involvement in these two crops. Although big in Louisiana, sugarcane and rice are not really big crops nationwide. We have about three million acres of rice and maybe one million acres of sugarcane. So those growers look to places like LSU, University of Arkansas, to do their sugarcane and rice breeding. So that's conducted uh, at the university level. Crops such as corn and soybeans, where you can have as much as 90 to 100 million acres, there's a lot of private companies out there. So private industry is a big employer of plant breeders. And the day-to-day -day function varies depending on whether you're working in in a public sector or in a private sector. For example, in the public sector, you would also be responsible for training students who are the future plant breeders. In the private sector, you're just mainly involved in cranking out the new varieties. 
So what Collins does as a plant breeder to LSU is variety development is certainly, you know, a, a big objective in the program and that's important. But you're also interested in the science of the, uh, you know, of plant breeding, and improving plant breeding methodologies and practices. So, and that's done a lot through graduate students. We talked about the multidisciplinary aspects of, of plant breeding. And in sugarcane, I mean, having a really good plant pathologist and entomologist is important. I'll give you an example. We've had a whole host of new diseases that are, have been introduced into Louisiana since 19, early 1980s. We had brown rust that was introduced in 1979. Sugarcane smut was introduced in 1981. Leaf skull disease was introduced in 1992. Yellow leaf in the late 90s. Orange rust in 2008. And so every time a new disease comes into Louisiana, Normally, we expect to control that through a plant breeding program. So having a uh, plant pathologist such as Dr. Jeff Hoy is a real asset to a breeding program. The same can be said for the entomologist. We've been battling the sugarcane borer since we've had sugarcane in Louisiana. We have an emerging pest, the Mexican rice borer. It's in the western part of the industry. You know, we have been working with Dr. Gene Reagan the LSU Ag Center entomologist for the last 10 years on this emerging pest. So when these pests do arrive, you know, we've had ample time to address them within a plant breeding program. Now, when I was coming up through training at LSU in the mid, early to mid 80s, um, generally plant breeders were trained with a, a big statistical background because they came out more as quantitative geneticists. As molecular biology uh, improved over the years and that science developed, people like Collins have a stronger training in molecular biology. Yeah, uh, molecular biology is a new awesome tool that um, plant breeders now have in their toolbox that they can use to conduct their breeding programs. The molecular biology is um, a tool that can be used to uh, interrogate the plant and understand the genetics of the plant better than was possible a couple of years ago. With molecular biology, you can know if a plant has a particular gene or not, even without evaluating that plant out in the field, such that you could screen out tens and thousands of plants in the greenhouse and select those plants that have the gene you're looking for and then plant them out in the field, saving a lot of years and resources that you could have spent evaluating these plants uh, out in the field for several years. And then there's another field within the, the arena called biotechnology. Biotechnology is a little different from molecular biology in the sense that with biotechnology you can actually identify the gene from another species, clone that gene and insert it into your plant of interest, and then evaluate if that plant expresses that gene. And if that happens, you now have a new trait. For example, uh, they've been able to um, insert the gene for Roundup resistance into, say, corn. And then now they're able to spray corn with Roundup and kill all the other weeds except the corn plant. Another good example is cold tolerance in, in tomatoes. There's a cold tolerance gene that they've inserted to improve cold tolerance in the tomato plant. So there's a, a wide a wider range of applications for transgenics. I, I, I read this in a book about a year ago and it was from uh, Dr. William Carter Stubbs. He was the first scientist that the LSU Ag Center hired in 1885. And although he was a soils person by training, about five years into his career he says, you know, nothing changed yields on the farm like the, like the application of new varieties. And that really stuck with me. And so I guess that's why I was always excited about a career in plant breeding because the development of new varieties, there's no greater effect than that on the farm than a career in plant breeding, improving varieties, improving disease resistance, gaining insect resistance, bringing in new technologies such as transgenics, cold tolerance, herbicide resistance, insect resistance. So all of those things can be accomplished through the uh, field of plant breeding. So anyone considering a career in plant breeding has an exciting career ahead.
Yeah, it's been it's been very exciting for me. I mean, there's no greater joy than releasing a variety and going out there and seeing farmers grow this variety. And you know, sometimes they pat you on the back, they invite you out for a beer. When I used to work in Australia, I go to a farmer's field and he want to show me what uh, a new variety, how well the new variety was performing, and he, and he invite me over for a meal and a beer and we talk about the variety. I mean, that's the beauty of being a plant breeder.